Now, the white guy with the sword is Thomas Grosner. So you have Thomas Grosner and you have Peter Salem, black and white, fighting side by side. But Peter is definitely the hero that day. 1817, this painting is done. And all the way up until the 1980s, we knew that that was Peter Salem, the hero of Bunker Hill. 1980s, the professors got together and said, oh, no, that's not Peter Salem. Um, we think that that's Grosvenor's slave is who that is. It, it, it's not Peter Salem. Oh, you're kidding. No. In the 80s, they, they changed that from Peter Salem to Grosvenor's slave, Asaba. And that's what they say. Oh, no, it's not Peter. It's Asaba, Grosvenor. It's his slave. How come the guy who painted it and the guy who was there and the guy who saw it and painted what he saw had him as Peter Salem and now we've all convinced, oh no, it's just like, because we're into this thing that the founders have got to be evil, we've got to make every effort we can to make them, we've got to make victims and everything. Mm -hmm. These guys weren't victims. They were courageous Americans who won the battle and we, don't, we can't afford to say that. Yeah. That'd make America look good. When did America have the first Speaker of the House? 1789. Wow. Details next. <laughs> Founders Fridays. This is lost history in America, and you need to preserve it. Back with me now is David Barton, founder and president of Wall Builders, and Lucas Morrell, professor at Washington Lee University in Virginia. We're going to get to some questions in the audience here in a second. First, one thing that I think is missing in America, and it is the key to America, has been the difference between individual rights and collective rights, and this man articulated that. In a speech entitled, Our Composite Nationality, Frederick Douglass said, I know of no rights of color superior to the rights of humanity. He thought the worst thing that could happen for blacks after the Civil War was to treat them as exceptions in the law. And so today, with the discursive logjam that we have over things like affirmative action and group rights, and the only thing that you get from government is if you ally with others who look like you or somehow are and categorized this is, like you. This goes into your theory that this is why this is not being taught, because you can't play the victim card. If you don't... It goes against the traditional victim narrative. After the Civil War, the history was actually written by the losers. That's the one time in history yeah, where exactly. the losers That's exactly wrote right. the history. That's exactly right. Really interesting perspective. That's exactly right. All right, David, explain quickly. Let's go through these people. Let's go through these. Uh, uh, this guy right here, this is Lemuel Haynes. Lemuel Haynes is uh, a soldier in the American Revolution. He's a black preacher. He's the first black preacher ordained in America that was a pastor of a white congregation in Vermont, Massachusetts, New York, several places. A, he, wait, a black professor in black a preacher, white... That's right, in a I white mean, church. Yeah, black, uh, black minister. Black minister in a white church in four different states. He was ordained in the Congregationalist denomination in 1785. Mm -hmm. he received, he's the first black to receive a master's degree in America. He got that in 1804 from Middlebury College. So Lemuel Haynes, uh, every year on Washington's birthday, he preached a special sermon about George Washington, his commander-in-chief in all of his churches where he was. Unbelievable. So we don't hear about Lemuel Haynes. Uh, this is Benjamin Banneker. I think he's the most brilliant scientist in American history. This guy, wow. unbelievable what he did. He is, he's the guy More who, so than, than uh, Franklin? Uh, I, I would put Franklin and Banneker almost equal. Now, Franklin Holy did cow. a lot of inventions. This guy one time took a pocket watch. He, he taught himself how to read. He taught himself science. He wrote an almanac that 10 years ahead, he was able to predict to the minute, solar eclipses, lunar eclipses, 10 years before they happened. I mean, by, by watching the motion through a telescope, it, unbelievable what the guy did. He once took the back off a pocket watch, saw how it worked, went home and carved a wooden clock with all the gears mainspring and it was accurate to within one minute a year a wooden clock the Holy guy did cow. he's the guy who laid out washington dc he, he's the the surveyor who did all that he's a brilliant mathematician jefferson Gave you him never a, knew this. No. Jefferson gave him an example to France said, hey, you guys in France think that blacks are in fear? Here's Benjamin Banneker. Okay, I have Jefferson two minutes total, so okay, quickly right here, there, and then we have one Right here, James Armistead, we talked about the first yep. double spy, really cool guy. This is Richard Allen. He's the first <laughs> founder of a black denomination in America. Uh, he is a soldier in the American Revolution. He actually is the first guy to practice medicine, taught by sign of the Declaration, Dr. Benjamin Rush. Just a really cool story. Okay. So, really cool. All right, good. Now, tell Up me. Here these guys. Now, let's take the uh, now, full of the... Uh, of the first uh, representatives. I asked, when did we have our first black speaker of the House? Uh, when did we have the first speaker of the House? 
uh, 17, 1789, when did we have our first black Speaker of the House? I bet most people would say never. Never, except it was right here. Joseph Hayne Rainey. Joseph Hayne Rainey of South Carolina is first black to preside over the House of Representatives. Uh, these are the first seven blacks elected to Congress. You have here Senator Hiram Rhodes Revels, the first black U.S. Senator elected. He was a minister of the gospel. He was a missionary. He worked with Frederick Douglass. He recruited three regiments of black soldiers in, in the uh, Civil War, and he was a missionary to slaves in the South. Uh, you have here Benjamin Turner, uh, Josiah Wall, the large. Th this guy right here is really cool. Uh, Robert Brown Elliott is probably the most brilliant guy of that era. He actually took on the vice president of the Confederacy in a debate on the floor and just tore his head off. The, the racist okay. Alexander Stevens. Just, it was a great when, debate. When, when did we turn? Were these guys proud Americans or did oh, they say God, we. we, we uh, they, th this is the epitome of, of what we were just talking about. These were individual guys. Half of these guys taught themselves to read. Half of these guys were slaves, and five years later, they're sitting in Congress. And as slaves, it was a capital offense to learn to read. So these guys in five years, and I'll guarantee you read their speeches and records of Congress, you better have a dictionary and a thesaurus in both hands because you won't understand the language that you, it is so brilliant what these guys did. And, but and were, they, were they there to say the white man is bad and the America is no, bad? No, no. And the, these guys were, uh, Richard Allen, let me go back here. Richard Allen Wait. had been in slavery. Richard Allen was in slavery and he held no bitterness at all. He says, God would not allow bitterness even in Joseph when he was in prison. Do you think God will allow it in us? He said, we can't have bitterness. He said, by the way, there were some whites who held us in slavery, but it's whites who are working for our freedom. I mean, these guys had no bitterness. They, weren't, they wouldn't allow it. Back in just a second. It's an easy book for you to read that will answer a lot of the questions. American History in Black and White by David Barton, available at Wall Builders, also on Amazon.com yes, and everything sir. else. Yeah, grab it now. David Barton is here, founder and president of Wall Builders, Lucas Morrell, professor at Washington and Lee University in Virginia. Uh, Deneen has a question in our audience. Yeah, when did this rich history get erased from the textbooks? Lucas hit it. Uh, the losers wrote the history. Uh, I mean, that's exactly what happened was the loser wrote. I, 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 you really said something, put it together for me, because my viewpoint was, and you're going to love this, this is red meat for you, Woodrow Wilson changed oh, the yeah. teaching of history. So. I hate that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Woodrow Wilson, when he came into office, he took every black in office in federal government and kicked them all out except one. He left one black in office. He is the he, first. He guy. resegregated the army. He resegregated. He's the first guy to show a film at the White House, and the film he showed was *Birth of a Nation*, a Klan recruiting film. He yeah. called it hit history written with lightning. That's right. The NAACP, to their credit, boycotted that movie. That's right. So. Uh, He's the guy who wrote the seven-volume history of the American people. And that is the set that suddenly became the whole basis of the way we started teaching 20th century history. It's racist. Oh, it's awful. It, it's but racist. he has a Ph.D. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rafiq. Can you please explain to the audience that um, Texas is working to put this in their history books as not trying to take out black history as the yeah. um, hype propagated by the media? Yeah, the media doesn't like what we're doing. I was one of the six guys appointed in Texas to help oversee the writing, the standards, one of the experts. And we got every one of these guys back in, and it drives back the left in. crazy. Back it's, in. Yeah, back in. Back in. And, and you know, I, I love what you said, too, about groups versus individuals, because if you look at the American Revolution, not only was it black and white, guess what? We had a lot of Hispanic heroes as well. And we, it is such a good group. And the national motto is E Pluribus Unum, out of many we became one. And we have tried for 20 years to make it E Unum Pluribus, out of one we're going to be all these groups. And right. it's back. Yes. Good. Well, what is the motivation behind not disseminating this information? What's the motivation behind the left or whoever it is that doesn't want this information put into the textbooks? Well, books? their mentality is that you get what is secure if government gives it right. to you. The Declaration of Independence says your rights are not the gift of government. You are That's born right. with them. You are endowed really, by your creator with these. That's right. Government exists to protect what you already possess. That is counter 180 degrees to what the typical statist approach to government exists. It really is slavery again. And you just start it's with a, the easiest to enslave, but it eventually ends in all of us being It's a plantation mentality. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Justice, go ahead. 
How have these revelation how have these revelations of the Black Founding Fathers personally affected your viewpoints on the American government and society today? Um, I, I have to tell you, I I I didn't grow up in the civil rights movement. I grew up in Seattle, Washington, and so I've always kind of just approached it as everybody's, you know, hey, everybody has a fair shot. And I, I was, I was one of your more uninformed people um, <clears throat> on planet Earth. Um, in learning about the founders and seeing um, the heroes that were involved, it only strengthens um, my view that. This, this was a divine document, the Declaration of Independence, that these guys really did struggle, just like in any society at any time. Bad guys, good guys. There were some real dirtbags. But for the most part, these guys were amazing, and they struggled in their time to do the right thing. You say that they're not Christians. They were Christians, and they fought for people who weren't. Yeah. The same thing with they were all white. Well, they fought for people who weren't. It was a confusing time, but an amazing time. Thanks. Back in a second. I was just thinking about justice the question uh, before the break, and uh, the other thing that I've, I've learned is I'm really hacked off because there were amazing people that have been forgotten. Remember them from New York. Good night, America.